I'm Ana Santiago Kiley. I was the first Youth Advocate of the Year award winner in 1996, and I'm fighting for the health and well being of my 13 year old son. I'm Nicolas Suarez, and I'm fighting for equity. I'm Gabe Gosmeyer, and I'm fiercely fighting for health equity, social justice, and health and well being for all. I'm Vinay Kamenin, and I'm fighting for the first tobacco free generation. I'm Madeline Erickson, and I am fighting for social justice. I'm Grace Plowman, and I'm fighting for health equity. I'm fighting for public health. I'm fighting for my friends and family. We are fighting for the people who can't fight for themselves. I'm fighting for compassion. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm fighting for change. Welcome to Fighting for Change the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids 2021 Youth Advocates of the Year Awards. I am your host, Jamira Burley. It is my honor to join you tonight as we celebrate young advocates from across the country who are overcoming adversity, taking on big challenges, and making progress in the fight for a more equitable, healthy future for all. Their perseverance speaks to me personally. At the age of 16, I started my career as a social justice advocate. On my own journey, I learned how powerful a passionate voice can be when echoed by others united in the fight for change. And tonight, we're not only honoring the winners who are part of the fight today, we're also celebrating the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids 25th anniversary, the legacy, power, and impact of past youth advocates. To help us recognize the impact of youth advocates have had while collaborating with the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, we are joined by a few people who are no stranger to Youth Advocates of the Year Awards. Please welcome Ana Santiago Kiley, the first ever Youth Advocate of the Year, and Alyssa Williams, who is our 2020 Barry Fist National Youth Advocate of the Year. Ana and Alyssa, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I wanna jump right in. Um, Ana, you are the first ever youth advocate to receive the award on the national stage. Tell us about that experience and what that did for your leadership overall. Oh, it was so exciting to be honored in this way and to suddenly be on a national platform. Um, it definitely gave me a sense of confidence and purpose in my life. Um, it showed that speaking to truth to power works and that our voices can be heard and changes can be made. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. And Alyssa, you are still a college student, but yet you were awarded the 2020 Barry Fisk Award. What did that mean for you and your advocacy, especially since you had already been working with the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids for a few years? Of course, it just kind of gave me the opportunity to take my advocacy to the next step. Um, especially working on a college campus, I got to engage with more peers across the nation. Working with the campaign in the past, I've had the opportunity to learn and grow with other youth advocates from all over the country in different states and I really got to learn from them using the resources and training opportunities that the campaign gave us to really help me not only apply that now in my college experience but also in the communities back home um, in Florida where I'm from. That's awesome. Thank you back on Alyssa's mm -hmm. comment. You know, everything passes through our lens of experience and this experience has given us opportunities. It has helped make us make decisions and form friendships and be connected with people across the country. When I was a youth advocate of the year, I was in the Rose Garden introducing Bill Clinton for important legislation and I was seeing the government in a way that um, I would never have seen in a textbook. So, you know, being part of the campaign really did um, shape my life and I know it has with Alyssa too. It allowed you to actually put what you were learning into real life experiences. That's amazing. So I have this final question for the two of you and we'll start with you first, Anna. Um, as a former youth advocate and as a current youth advocate, why is it so important for young people to get involved in the fight for change, um, especially in moments like the one we're in now? Well, kids and teenagers are full of great ideas and they really have a sense of optimism that sometimes adults don't have or don't see. And, you know, one thing I've learned is that change is a process and it begins with voices. 
And since the youth are our future, it's really important to lift their voices, be heard, and begin the process of change. It's a great answer, Anna, and I agree. It's important for the youth to stay involved and make sure their voices are heard because most of the decisions that are being made today will affect them and the generations to come after them. So it's important that they have an active role to play in those decisions. Awesome. Thank you both for your continued leadership. I'm super honored to be able to chat with you tonight and I look forward to all the impact you'll continue to make in the work ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Keep it up. <laughs> For everyone tuning in from home, you can be a part of the conversation tonight by using the hashtag Youth Advocate Awards to cheer on your favorite awardee or to tell us what impacted you most about the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids work. And if you're feeling inspired, support the work and donate today. Go to tobaccofreekids.org backslash donate. Now let's go to someone who has dedicated his career to fighting for change and helped found the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids in 1996. As president of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, Matt Myers has been involved with virtually every major U.S. tobacco legislative effort and many global efforts for the last 25 years. I'm honored to introduce Matt Myers. Thank you, Jamira. I'm so pleased to join in welcoming everyone to the 2021 Youth Advocates of the Year Awards. While I wish we could be together in person, I have no doubt you will be inspired by the young people and tobacco control champions we honor tonight. This year, we're thrilled to be celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids and the dramatic progress all of us have made together to drive down tobacco use and save lives, both in the United States and around the world. What an incredible 25 years. In fact, there's so much to celebrate and so many friends, partners, and supporters to thank and honor that we're doing so in two parts. Tonight is all about the remarkable young people who inspire our work and have done so much to lead the effort to create the first tobacco-free generation. The Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids isn't just about protecting kids. It's also about partnering with and empowering youth to become change agents now and throughout their lives. Tonight, we're proud to showcase the incredible leadership of our youth advocates, not just this year, but throughout our 25 year history. And not just during the year we honored them, but for many years thereafter. We very much hope that we can gather together in person next May to celebrate the extraordinary tobacco control accomplishments of the past 25 years. No one could have envisioned the progress that has been made but our 25th anniversary isn't just a celebration, it's a recommitment to accelerate that progress, to finish the job, and to continue to build a more equitable and healthier future for all. So let's get started. In addition to honoring our 2021 Youth Advocates of the Year and a true champion, Congresswoman Karen Bass tonight, we will share a series of moments in youth advocacy history. I'm thrilled to present the first one. Hi, my name is Maggie Jo Linscott and I'm the 2014 National Youth Advocate of the Year. I learned a lot about the ways the tobacco industry was marketing to um, my peers and I wanted to make a change. I worked with the local organization, they're called Students Working Against Tobacco or SWAT. So working with SWAT, we created this campaign called Not a Replacement. And it was after a memo from the tobacco industry kind of came forward that likened their customers to replacement smokers. The Not a Replacement campaign arose from this idea that people are much more than replacement consumers or replacement smokers. And it really became this international movement where people were standing up to the tobacco industry and telling them that they were not a replacement. They were so much more than that. And it utilized social media, um, and Instagram and photos and tagging um, to really become not just a movement made by one person or a group of people, but a movement for everyone. Even in a year full of challenges, our youth advocates continue to make their voices heard while fighting for change. And their perseverance helped to improve health and save lives across the United States. Tonight, as we celebrate this year's Youth Advocates of the Year Award honorees, we also want to celebrate the work of past honorees 
and find out how their advocacy work shape what they're doing today. So joining us tonight to introduce this year's winners are four former Youth Advocates of the Year honorees. Shannon Brewer-Riggs, Gabe Glissmeyer, Megan Pazricha, and Walter Kerr. All who are here to recognize and help pass the torch to the next generation of advocates. Let's get the celebration started. Hi, I'm Shannon Brewer-Riggs, the 2001 Youth Advocate of the Year. I'm thrilled to be here today to help introduce Aditya Inla and the tremendous work that he's doing in his community to stop big tobacco. Being a youth advocate is a pivotal experience. It was for me personally and professionally. As a youth advocate, you learn to strategize. You learn to leverage your network and your resources and to create new networks in order to solve seemingly unsolvable problems. As a youth advocate, I learned that my voice, one voice can make a difference in the community. And that by bringing together many voices in a unified cause, that that's where the magic truly lies. Congratulations and thank you to the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids for your ongoing leadership in this area. And thank you and congratulations to all of this evening's Youth Advocate of the Year Award recipients. The work that you're doing is saving lives. So without further ado, I pass the megaphone to Aditya Inla. Congratulations and I cannot wait to see where you go. Hi, my name is Aditya Inla and I'm from Union City in California. I lost family members to smoking related illnesses and my family has experienced the devastating effects of tobacco. And now I'm seeing e-cigarette usage grow at an alarming rate among my peers. I think the tobacco industry really targets kids because they wanna hook their next generation of customers. I realized that there's a general lack of awareness about the use of tobacco in the South Asian community. And this really affects me personally as uh, my parents came from India themselves. The South Asians don't smoke very often, but they use cultural tobacco products like pan and gutka at around a 12% rate, which is really similar to the national smoking rate of 14%. And so knowing this data, I started the EGLE project in order to raise awareness about this issue, to help public health departments reach this community with information relevant to them and to engage the South Asian community in the advocacy process. And I think that's really what doing research can help with. It identifies these problem areas, what exactly you can use to reach out to these communities and get them involved in fighting for their own health and safety. If I could imagine a perfect world, I really wouldn't see tobacco use at all in like any community. You wouldn't be seeing things like uh, chewing tobacco in the South Asian community. You wouldn't see things like menthol cigarettes in the African-American community. And you wouldn't be seeing things like youth using e-cigarettes among high schoolers. I think that's really what I imagine in the future, one free of tobacco completely. Hi, I'm Gabe Glissmeyer, Youth Advocate of the Year for 2012. When I was recognized as Youth Advocate of the Year, I was just freshly out of high school, but was still passionate about reducing the burden of tobacco and nicotine in the LGBTQ community. Now, 10 years later, I'm still fiercely fighting that fight to continue protecting my community. I'm thrilled to present our next award to one amazing and passionate youth advocate. Madeline Erickson has used her voice to continue fighting against big tobacco and pushing for change. I know that she'll continue pushing for change like I have and to continue to protect her community as well. Congratulations, Madeline, and keep fighting that good fight. Hi, I'm Madeline Erickson and I am from Bismarck, North Dakota. I became an advocate because I believe everyone deserves the right to be educated about the dangers of tobacco and vaping. During the North Dakota legislative season, there was a bill surrounding cigar bars that would create an exception in our smoke-free law. I had the opportunity to testify in one of the Senate committees about this cigar bar bill. I testified in opposition to the bill because a lot of the talks surrounding this bill talked about how cigar bars could be a place where people could meet and decisions could be made. In my testimony, I advocated for the youth and how they would not get to make this decision and how they would be stuck with cigar bars, a place that would harm their health. 
I want to voice the concerns of North Dakota's youth, the people who will most be affected by this bill in the future. We were really fortunate that this bill did not pass through the legislature, so we will not be having cigar bars in North Dakota. It's very empowering to see that there are other people who believe the same things I do, and I'm not just out here by myself. And it also helps me in my work knowing that there are people behind me and there are people who will back me up. So it's really nice to have that community who has the same ideas and who will help me throughout my work and who will help others. Hi, my name is Megan Pastoricha and I had the honor of serving as the International Youth Advocate of the Year in 2003. I am very excited to be here today presenting this award to Vinayak Menon. I'm allergic to cigarette smoke and growing up, I became passionate about making Delaware smoke free. As the state chair of the Kick Butts generation, I mobilized youth support for Delaware to become the second state in America to pass the indoor smoking ban. From there, I traveled to India and abroad and presented at international conferences to educate thousands of children about the harmful effects of tobacco use. Receiving this award changed my life. I continue to use the leadership skills I learned with the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids while at Harvard and Harvard Business School, and as a renewable energy investor at a private equity firm, and now as the co-founder and CEO of an international nonprofit, Global Youth Help. We train young people to become leaders in their communities through service, including tobacco prevention. I believe you are never too young to lead, and Vinayak Menon is a great example as an inspiring youth leader. Vinayak uses his voice to fight big tobacco and push for change towards an addiction-free world. I'm thrilled to pass the torch and present this award to Vinayak. Hello, I'm Vinayak Menon and I'm from Swanee, Georgia. What really prompted me to join the fight against tobacco is this realization that my community needed youth leaders and youth advocates for a crisis that disproportionately affected young people. One of the ways that I'm trying to combat this development is trying to spread awareness through the media and the newspapers in my community. The resource guide that I created, it included hotlines and key information on how to access treatment services and cessation services and really social services in general. And to get this community resource guide out into my community, um, I worked with um, our community food banks, such as Meals on Wheels, um, the Place of Forsyth and Meals by Grace. And we ended up getting these resource guides out to 500 families um, in the state of Georgia. And what I'm really hoping that people can take away from this effort that we did is that regardless of the obstacles that COVID-19 creates for our prevention work and for the people that are in our community, there's always ways that we can stay creative and engage the members of, of our community and spread awareness. Hi. I'm Walter Kerr, National Youth Advocate of the Year awardee from 2003. I'm so happy to be here today presenting this award to Grace Plowman, who's part of the next generation of voices in the fight for change. Being recognized as a Youth Advocate of the Year awardee set me up for a lifetime of advocacy work. Working with the Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids showed me how much public policy matters as a way to drive true, long-lasting change that affects the lives of millions. Today, I'm one of the co-founders of the Unlocked Aid Coalition, a new advocacy group that partners with international development agencies like USAID to use innovation to address the immense global health, climate, and food security challenges of the 21st century. This year, Grace used her voice to help us all get one step closer to an addiction-free world. She's done incredible work in Minnesota, and we can't wait to see what's next. Congratulations, Grace. It's your turn to lead the way. Keep up the amazing work. Hi, my name is Grace Plowman and I'm from Shoreview, Minnesota. The tobacco industry really does target teens through its use of flavors, other fruity things that make tobacco more appealing like menthol, so that teens are doing it because they like the flavors. I spoke a couple months back at a city council meeting specifically about banning of all flavors, including menthol, which menthol is usually um, excluded from flavor bans, uh, but menthol is actually just as harmful as the other flavors. And majority of uh, my community, the black community, is addicted to menthol cigarettes rather than just regular cigarettes. 
What really got me interested in this cause is that I do have a couple of family members that smoke cigarettes and things like that. But what really got me more interested in it was when I went to high school and we would always have our bathrooms locked because kids were always vaping in there. By doing tobacco advocacy, I realized how much the tobacco industry is specifically targeting marginalized groups on purpose. And that was really what drew me in because it was so interesting learning about how tobacco is not just um, a product that you can smoke, but it's a huge equity issue. Congratulations to Aditya, Madeline, Maniac, and Grace for this special honor. Your work is so moving, and I'm inspired seeing such an impressive group of change makers join what is clearly a long and proud tradition of passionate youth advocates. And thinking about the long tradition, let's take another quick moment to hear from another former honoree, Jeff Jordan. Youth advocate once, but fighting for change always. Hi, I'm Jeff Jordan and I'm from San Diego, California. I got involved in tobacco control and become a youth advocate mainly because I didn't like uh, what the tobacco industry was convincing. And it was really uh, frustrating to see young people convinced to start using tobacco products and start these lifelong addictions because of what the industry was doing. And that's really what motivated me to become a youth advocate. So having been a youth advocate has actually allowed me to really understand what it is that youth advocates look for, what it is that youth advocates need to succeed. And so today we work with thousands of youth advocates every year that are working on tobacco control issues in numerous states, as well as other issues. Um, and, and we're able to, uh, thanks to this experience of being on the ground and being a youth advocate ourselves, really design our programs to truly empower young people um, to, to be those leaders, understand you know, what is the right mix of mentorship and allowing them to make those decisions and lead. From experience, we know that change is a group effort. And our next honorees show us just how much impact a group of passionate people can have to uplift and inspire an entire community. To introduce this year's group award, it's my pleasure to introduce former honoree Sarah Kay, joining us from Honolulu, Hawaii. Hi, my name is Sarah Kay. I'm the 2018 Youth Advocate of the Year honoree. During my time as a youth advocate, I gained many valuable leadership and public speaking skills that have helped me professionally and personally and taught me how to rally my community towards a common cause. Being recognized as the Youth Advocate of the Year taught me that my voice matters and together, we can be the first tobacco-free generation. This year, I'm honored to present the group award to the Coalition for Tobacco-Free Hawaii's Youth Council. I know firsthand how great they are at uniting the people around the Hawaiian Islands to help Hawaii's taking breathe aloha. Keep up the great work. We're the Coalition for Tobacco-Free Hawaii's Youth Council and we're from across the Hawaiian Islands. The Coalition for Tobacco-Free Hawaii's Youth Council represents all of the Hawaiian Islands with 80 students participating in advocacy activities fighting for tobacco prevention. This includes students from middle school, high school, and university levels. So it's a comprehensive way to tackle the tobacco industry through Youth Voice. I think something that's been really important um, when presenting to our peers is taking a different route to showing the effects of tobacco. Something that the Youth Council is able to do because we are youth ourselves is recognize that the fault is on the tobacco industry um, and kind of talk about how the tobacco industry is exploiting our youth. Um, and kind of talk about the deceptive marketing tactics. But by putting the focus on the industry, it's allowed for youth to feel more comfortable having open conversations of using tobacco and feel more comfortable seeking out help because they're not worried about getting shamed or they're not worried about getting in trouble. They're just worried about getting the support that they need and ensure that an industry isn't further damaging their communities. Within my school, I've noticed that flavors have been a really big issue. The flavors really target Hawaii youth. You know, flavors like pog, you know, passion fruit, orange, things like that really target youth. Our policy priority last year was a comprehensive approach to number one and the sale of flavored tobacco products, um, which includes menthol. Um, increasing regulation on the tobacco industry by, by making sure that e-cigarettes are taxed at the same rate all other tobacco products are. Um, closing the online loophole while also funding youth cessation programs. And something that we actually 
participated in this year was a March Against Menthol, something that um, legislators tend to really leave out of our flavor bills every single year is menthol, and that's because of how popular that flavor is to specifically the Native Hawaiian and Black communities, which is why we find it so important to remain in there. My entire experience being on the Youth Council has really taught me uh, that youth actually can make a difference, uh, especially in the legislative world. I think it's something that most youth see as some abstract concept you can't really get a hold of, something that's untouchable. But with the Youth Council, being able to advocate, especially for issues that impact us and issues we believe in, I believe that uh, it has really taught me a lot of good life skills, especially uh, being civically active and getting involved and helping my community. What an impressive group. Now we move even further than Hawaii to our international work. In a moment, Yolanda Richardson, our Executive Vice President for Global Programs, will provide an overview of our global progress and present the Judy Wilkenfeld Award for International Tobacco Control Excellence, an award that has special meaning to all of us at the campaign. This award goes to an advocate who has made extraordinary contributions to reducing tobacco use in low- and middle-income countries. It's named for Judy Wilkenfeld who founded our international program and is so very special to the Tobacco Free Kids family. Judy was a tireless advocate and leader with a unique ability to bring diverse people together for the common good. She was a mentor, friend, and moral compass to advocates throughout the world, including me. Sadly, we lost Judy to cancer 14 years ago. Since its establishment, the Judy Wilkenfeld Award has helped propel a rising group of young leaders to serve as role models and exemplify Judy's unique respect for people of different cultures, backgrounds, and beliefs. Leaders who make change by bringing people together. Now to Yolanda, who will present the Judy Wilkenfeld Award and share more about the progress we're making together across the globe. Thanks, Matt. We've heard some great stories from young people stepping up to help their communities and save lives. Youth advocacy is also critical to our international work. Young people are bringing creative energy to prevent their generation from becoming victims to industry marketing. Last year, we had a huge win when youth groups helped force a giant Indonesia tobacco company to stop sponsoring the National Badminton League. COVID has not slowed us down. In a truly monumental achievement, Paraguay went 100% smoke-free. Now, South America has become the first multi-nation continent to protect people from the harms of secondhand smoke in all public places and workplaces, protecting an estimated 430 million people from the harms of secondhand smoke. Still, Big Tobacco used the pandemic to try to rebrand itself as a good corporate citizen by claiming to help in the COVID response while still aggressively marketing their deadly products. They've attacked our funders and they've attacked us too. We've remained undeterred, but more importantly, our partners and colleagues around the world remain undeterred as well. And they forged ahead to pass strong tobacco control measures. Kyrgyzstan's parliament passed a comprehensive tobacco control law last month that extends to heated tobacco products and e-cigarettes. More Chinese cities and provinces passed 100% smoke-free laws, bringing the total number of people protected to around 173 million people. The Botswana parliament passed a comprehensive tobacco control law this past August. And other countries, including Bangladesh, India, Philippines, and Ukraine, have made tobacco less affordable to kids by raising taxes. Nobody better exemplifies the commitment to saving lives from tobacco than Haran Gerba Borta, Director General of Ethiopia's Food and Drug Authority. Ms. Borta has fought vigorously for strong and effective tobacco control policies to protect Ethiopian citizens and the country's significant youth population. And we are honored to present her with the 2021 Judy Wilkenfield Award for International Tobacco Control Excellence. My name is Heran Garba at Ethiopian Food and Drug Authority. I am the Director General for the Authority. Ethiopia is uh, the second most populated country in Africa. 
70% of the population is a young population. When we compare to other countries, the number seems that prevalence of tobacco use is low, but because we are aspiring for prosperity, we have to have a very strong control on tobacco use. If we don't have the strong controlling mechanism, then this young population will be affected by the ill effects of tobacco use. We want our young population to live a healthy life and involved in the development agendas of our country and push our country to prosperity. So that's why the, the controlling tobacco use uh, is very important to our country. We have banned fully electronic cigarettes, we have banned fully flavored tobacco products, and we have 70% pictorial health working on packaging. We have 100% smoke-free public places, government institutions, health institutions, because staying healthy, living healthy is a, is a human right. And I know that tobacco control effort is a teamwork. So bringing that team spirit and bringing different organizations into one agenda has brought us into success of uh, passing this very strong tobacco law. Hello to my fellow tobacco control champions in Ethiopia, South Africa, and around the world. I want to express my sincere gratitude to everyone who believes that my work and leadership on tobacco control are worth encouraging and recognizing. I receive this award with great humility and respect. While serving in the Ethiopian Food and Drug Administration, the EFDA in short, for over a decade, I have come to believe in prevention as a base public health strategy. While my training and a significant part of my experience in earlier years were mostly related to pharmaceutical products and food safety, I came to realize the true ill effects of a weak tobacco control policy. I can think of no more impactful way to contribute to public health than to prove that tobacco control policy can in fact protect tens of millions of Ethiopians from addiction. Ethiopia is uh, the second most populous country in Africa and has a unique demographics. Uh, this is are a key factor that keep me doing my best. Ethiopia's population, now over 110 million, consists mostly of young people. More than 50 million are 18 or under. Without a doubt, Ethiopia's booming youth population and growing urbanization is the key business driver for the industry, and we must act now to prevent tobacco companies from targeting this use. The tobacco industry's publicly declared position to make the country a center of tobacco business made me fight even more fiercely in my role as head of the EFD. The path towards Ethiopia's strong legislation was not easy. When the law was at a very draft stage, the federal government actually owned the tobacco industry. Even after the industry was privatized in the year 2016, enduring relationships between the industry and the highest levels of government complicated the entire process. However, this challenge gave the FDA staff and me the strength to be even more strategic and never give up the fight. Our success would not have been possible without forging a strong relationship with civil society. I wouldn't be exaggerating to say civil society groups were the engine of our defense against strong industry interference until the law was passed in the year 2019. These groups, with support from the Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids, supported the advocacy efforts through legal analysis and drafting, education, media advocacy and countering the industry. Taking this opportunity, I would like to thank all my staff and the government officials who helped to create the successful collaboration with civil society partners. In particular, the leadership and commitment of the former Director General of the EFDA, the former Minister of Health and the current Health Minister were uh, critical. Now, I would like to assure you that I am committed to working harder than ever in my current role. Our next frontier is ensuring meaningful implementation of key tobacco control measures, such as the laws smoke-free provisions. Finally, I would like to thank the Wickenfields 
family for this award, which is not only a recognition for Ethiopia's promising past, but a huge responsibility to me personally and the entire EFDA and Ministry of Health team involved in tobacco control. I want really to thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, Heron, and thank you for fighting hard for a healthier Ethiopia. It's leaders like Heron and all of our honorees tonight who energize us to do more. And each of them is fighting for something because of something, whether they are motivated by family, by friends, or by a drive to find justice. Advocates everywhere are fueled by purpose. Let's take a look back to see what moved another of our past youth advocates. My name is Nicolas Suarez, and I was the South Region Youth Advocate of the Year. I got involved with the campaign through my work with a local affiliate where we educated the youth and really taught them and given them the tools to revolt and fight back against big tobacco. It all snowballed to statewide efforts and eventually me being named the 2017 South Region Youth Advocate of the Year and working alongside the campaign. I did get involved at first to fight for my mother to get her to quit smoking. My mother has been smoke free for over seven years now. And it's that reason, you know, seeing that individual effect wanted me to do more, not just for her, not just for my family, but for the community and hardest hit communities with them. I'm currently working with a nonprofit known as GOT Vax. Uh, and this has got to be some of the most exciting and fulfilling work that I've done so far. Uh, GOT Vax is a nonprofit organization that is working to provide greater vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine equity to underserved communities, people of color, minorities, because it is important to provide those that do not have an equitable life, to provide the opportunity for them to live in an equitable world. I'm inspired to see so many young people and so many people who have been fighting for change at such a young age continue the work for a better future. Like Nicholas and so many we've heard from tonight, I started my advocacy at a young age. And though it hasn't always been easy, it's been worthwhile. So now I have the honor of speaking with someone who has turned his youth advocacy into a career. I'm excited to welcome Gustavo Torres. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the director of youth advocacy for a campaign for tobacco-free kids, and you went from being a youth advocate to now being an advocate for youth. Um, with such a phenomenal story, starting as a teenager, tell me more about your path to advocacy and how that has impacted your work today. My entire life, tobacco has been a, a critical point of mm -hmm. my life. You know, growing up, my mom smoked. My aunts and uncles smoked and multiple family friends smoked. So it was always around me. On first week of school uh, for junior high school, as I was walking on the campus, I saw a sign for this anti-tobacco club. And I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I want to help my mom quit. Um, they also had free pizza. So that was Priorities. a key motivator. <laughs> but I quickly learned once I walked through those doors and mm -hmm. sat and listened to what the folks had to say that it was so much greater than my mom. There was an industry that's really selling death, disease, and addiction, mm -hmm. not only here in the United States, but across the globe. So my life's work was initially to support her, but now it's been to support all of the others um, who are being impacted by this industry. Now your evolution in your career, you've probably met with policymakers, young people, and directly impacted communities. What is one thing that you've learned in that process? I think that my voice actually matters. Mm -hmm. um, and more importantly, I actually have a voice. I think growing up, you know, you, you hear kids are to be seen and not heard. Um, but in this space, um, kids are to be seen, kids are to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, young people are really leading our current generation. That's pretty cool. I mean, I always prefer to work with young people there, you know. Don't tell the adults, but they're the cool ones in the room. Let's be um, but to be honest, I'm, I'm curious if you could just tell us, you know, why does it matter for an organization like Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids to not only invest in young people and to say young people matter, but also to um, elevate voices like yours into positions of power where you can make critical change? I think that's, for me, what has been the greatest part of my advocacy journey is to be able to work with the Campaign for Tobacco Free yeah. Kids, an organization that really wants to not only support young people authentically mm -hmm. in their development, but, but understands critically about that investment and how do we invest in programs, looking at experiential learning that really support not just the issue now, but supporting young people in their development um, well beyond. This is also why it's critically important to have funders and partners really supporting this work, which I wanna take this opportunity to thank all of the sponsors and partners who supported tonight's virtual awards. We're especially grateful to our most generous supporters, including Bloomberg Philanthropies, 
the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Subject Matter, the American Heart Association, CVS Health, GSK, Bully Pulpit Interactive, and Truth Initiative. A sincere thank you to the dedicated members of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids Board of Directors, our entire Tobacco-Free Kids team, and to each and every one of you who have joined us virtually this evening. Thank you for sharing our vision, raising your voice, and helping us make the next generation tobacco-free. We couldn't do this without you. Gustavo, you have been amazing. Thank you so much. Now let's continue with tonight's celebration. Next up, it is my pleasure to introduce the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids Executive Vice President of U.S. Programs, Lori Rubiner. Thank you, Jamira. I now have the distinct honor of introducing our 2021 Champion Award recipient, Congresswoman Karen Bass of California. The Champion Award is our highest honor. It recognizes an individual who has had the greatest impact in the fight to reduce tobacco use and its devastating consequences. Congresswoman Bass is a truly deserving honoree and a real champion for our nation's kids. She is a big reason why we have made so much progress toward eliminating flavored tobacco products. Congresswoman Bass mobilized members of Congress to push the FDA to finally move forward with banning menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars, a critical victory for kids and health equity. She worked tirelessly to secure House passage of the Reversing the Youth Tobacco Epidemic Act, which would ban all flavored tobacco products. And she has been an influential voice in state and local efforts in California to prohibit the sale of flavored tobacco products. We are delighted to honor Congresswoman Bass for her courage and leadership in taking on big tobacco and for all that she has done to protect kids and save lives. Good evening, I'm Lisa Liu from Los Angeles, California, and I'm a 2020 National Youth Advocate of the Year and the CEO of International Youth Tobacco Control. It is inspiring to see policymakers on the local, state, and national level fighting to protect youth from the harms of tobacco. And from my very own city of Los Angeles, Congresswoman Karen Bass has been a passionate, persistent, and pivotal leader in this fight. I was really inspired to be involved in politics as a child because of everything that was happening during the 60s, the civil rights movement, the protests against the war in Vietnam. And so it was really something I grew up with. And Congresswoman Diane Watson called me up one day and told me that I had been a community activist long enough and I needed to go serve in Sacramento and uh, I had no interest in doing that at all. But she told me that at the time there were no African-American women in the state legislature. And I certainly felt a sense of obligation when she told me that. Hi, I'm Christy Ross, Director of Health and Wellbeing with the NAACP. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Representative Bass. Her work has helped in the fight for change and gets us one step closer to smoke-free communities. Thank you so much, Representative Bass, for all of your support and congratulations. Thank you for fighting for change, Congresswoman Bass. As a physician assistant, I saw firsthand the harm done by smoking, and I want to do everything I can to prevent smoking in the community. As a legislator, I want the state's anti-smoking efforts to have the biggest bang for our buck. So I'm very pleased to stand here today with the African American Tobacco Control Leadership Council to call for an end to the underrepresentation of African American Californians in state smoking count. I am so proud to be your colleague in this fight to protect our community and to bring our community the wellness that it so deserves. Again, Congresswoman Karen Bass, I'm so proud of you and congratulations. Thank you for making change happen, Representative Bass. Today, 85% of African American adults and 94% of black youth who smoke are using menthol products. If that number is not disturbing enough, smoking-related illnesses are the number one cause of death for African Americans. When African Americans are disproportionately dying from a substance heavily distributed and targeted to our communities, we cannot sit back and watch people die right in front of us. We're grateful to Congresswoman Bass 
her voice, her passion, her tenacity, and moving forward the agenda of advocating for our youth's future. This is Good Trouble. My name is Jacqueline Lee, and I'm from Anaheim, California, and I would like to give a big shout out to Congresswoman Bess. Her work has helped us in the fight for change and gets us one step closer to a smoke-free future. And it's important to have someone like Representative Bass in our corner because she's heavily involved in the community, she's action-oriented, and she always strives to have a positive and healthy environment. And that's what I admire most about her. Thank you so much, Representative Bass. When I received the Youth Advocate of the Year Award last September, Congresswoman Bass said something to me that stuck with me until this day. She said, it makes all the difference in the world when the voices of young people speak up. I completely agree with that. And I want to add to her sentence. It makes all the difference in the world to young people when policymakers affirm, encourage, and amplify our voices. So on behalf of all youth advocates, Congresswoman Bass, I thank you for your work, for your commitment, and for your encouragement. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege to introduce our 2021 Champion Award honoree, California Congresswoman Karen Bass. Thank you, Lori, for that warm introduction. Let me just thank the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids for honoring me in your 2021 Champion Award. We have worked so long and so hard to stop the latest scheme of the tobacco industry. You know, we have been so successful over the years. I have worked on this issue for more than 25 years. California led the way in the anti-smoking laws and the taxes that we placed on people who smoked. And it is almost taboo, actually not almost, it is taboo, anywhere in California to smoke. And so we've had tremendous success. And that is the exact reason the tobacco industry needs new generations of smokers. So their latest scheme to make it sexy, to make it fun, to make it childlike. We have fought long and hard and we've had many victories and those victories will continue. And the latest, of course, to ban menthol, their really sinister way of targeting the African-American community and trying to make it a social justice issue. Well, we locked arms and we defeated those efforts and we're gonna continue to fight. So I just want you to know that I am so honored that you have honored me. Thank you very much and the fight will continue. Thank you, Congresswoman Bass. It's because of champions like you that we continue to make tremendous progress at a time of enormous challenges. COVID-19 may have changed how we work, but I am incredibly proud that our organization and our movement has risen to the challenge. We have much to celebrate tonight. We are closer than ever to ending the scourge of menthol cigarettes in the United States. In April, after years of wrangling and lawsuits, the FDA finally announced that it will act to prohibit not just menthol cigarettes, but flavored cigars as well. This is a huge step towards ending the tobacco industry's predatory targeting of kids and black communities in the United States with these products and the crushing toll it has taken on black lives. We are committed to working with our partners to keep the pressure on the FDA until it finishes the job. We also continue to win at the state and local level. This year, our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., joined the growing list of states and cities that have ended the sale of flavored tobacco products. We're hopeful that Los Angeles, Denver, San Jose, San Diego, and many more will soon act as well. And in California, we're gearing up to defeat the tobacco industry's referendum next year to overturn the statewide law. This past year, the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids also redoubled our commitment to addressing health disparities with utmost urgency. Through our Campaign for the Culture Initiative, we are working with and supporting organizations representing those most impacted by tobacco use. We have also increased our efforts to educate, partner with, and engage Black and other youth to ensure they're aware not only of the risks of tobacco use, but also Big Tobacco's exploitive tactics. None of this progress would have been possible without our many partners and supporters. 
So we offer a heartfelt thank you to all of you with our amazing youth advocates as our inspiration. I am confident we will win this fight. Our National Youth Advocate of the Year Award is named for Barry Fisk, a longtime member of our Board of Directors who passed away in 2019 after a brave fight with cystic fibrosis. Barry was a tireless advocate, a never-ending fighter for the right to breathe clean air, and a passionate leader, inspiration, and friend. Barry believed deeply in the power of youth to change the world. This year, thanks to the generosity of Barry's friends and family, we launched the Barry Fisk Youth Leadership Fund to take our youth advocacy program to a new level. The Barry Fisk Fund was founded with a $250,000 gift from a close friend of Barry's, Jessica Nagel, and an additional investment from Barry's husband, Russell Planitzer, and the Planitzer family who have been a driving force behind the fund. We have been overwhelmed by the generous support of Barry's friends and family. Their contributions have sent the fund's total soaring to almost $750,000. But we're just getting started. The Barry Fist Fund will help us foster a new generation of young advocates fighting for change. It will put our youth advocacy work on firmer ground for the future among other things, the Barry Fisk Fund will recognize exceptional youth leaders through the annual Barry Fisk National Youth Advocate of the Year Award. Invest in young people from communities most impacted by the health inequities caused by tobacco and launch a comprehensive network of youth leaders to impact public policy in states and cities across the United States. When you support our youth advocacy initiatives, you are investing in the next generation of social change leaders who will shape our nation and the world in myriad ways. Please consider donating to the Barry Fist Fund. And now, I am delighted to present the 2021 Barry Fisk National Youth Advocate of the Year Award, which recognizes one outstanding youth advocate who demonstrates leadership, commitment, creativity, and courage. This year's recipient is Milton Wynn of Elk Grove, California, who has been a leader in campaigns to ban flavored tobacco products and so much more. Here's a short video highlighting his impressive work. Hi, I'm Milton Wynn and I'm from Elk Grove, California. I think looking at the tobacco use of my grandfather and looking at that cigarette addiction that he suffered with so long, I think that's something that was really impactful for me. And I think that's something that, that really keeps my drive going in terms of continuing my tobacco advocacy. I think really um, activating youth in the fight against tobacco has been something that I've really been proud of. I've been able to reach out to peers and essentially create and take part in some of these community events like Youth Quest 2021, part of Youth Quest was that we were able to give each attendee the opportunity to meet um, virtually with a state legislator or the staff member of a state legislator to essentially practice their own advocacy skills and to practice educating on tobacco control issues. I think there's a preconceived notion that the youth voice is somehow limited, especially if you're under 18, that not being able to vote is the same as not being able to have an impact on your community or having an impact on government and politics, but with my tobacco control advocacy and with advocating with legislators and policymakers on, on different levels of government, it's really shown me that even as a youth, your youth voice has so much power, it has so much impact, and it's so meaningful. And the youth voice truly can create change. And oftentimes policymakers are really receptive to the youth voice and they really truly want to help um, create positive change, especially for youth. Now, let me turn it over to Milton and Jamira to dig deeper into his work. Milton, congratulations on this honor. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so happy and excited to be here tonight. How does it feel to be recognized as a Barry Fisk National Youth Advocate of the Year? I think being recognized as the Barry Fisk National Youth Advocate of the Year is a really humbling experience for me. And I, I wanna take some time, of course, to, to honor the legacy of Barry Fisk and, and all the work she's done for the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids and also for tobacco control and the public health community at large. But I think it's a really humbling experience and it's really an indication of hope in the tobacco control movement to hopefully one day create the first tobacco-free generation. 
You've mentioned you got involved in tobacco control because of your grandfather. How did that experience with tobacco use motivate you to fight for change? I think a lot of my motivation with my grandfather really came from the conversations that I've had with him in the past. I know growing up, a lot of my conversations really revolved around tobacco with him and just asking about his experiences with tobacco. And what I was able to gather from that really was that it was a lot of environmental and social factors that really pushed him into tobacco addiction, into nicotine addiction. So it was something seen as cool and, and something seen as trying to fit in. So I think really realizing that fact and how big tobacco is able to use that to addict individuals, that's something that really motivated me to go into tobacco control. What would you say is your proudest accomplishment in your advocacy work? I think my most proudest personal accomplishment really would be helping my grandfather quit smoking cigarettes. But I think on a more general sense, it's really all the interactions that I've been able to have with community members and with my classmates and my own advocacy. And really it's just um, hearing all the personal anecdotes, whether it be a classmate telling me that they quit vaping because of my advocacy work or, or hearing a community member learn a tiny bit more about the dangers of tobacco and how they can help take on the toughest fights against big tobacco. As you know, tonight we are celebrating some incredible young people making change happen. You mentioned that the power of Youth Voice. What is unique about the Youth Voice and why is it so powerful? So first and foremost, youth are the future. And I think with an issue like tobacco use and tobacco control, it's really important for youth to be an integral part of that discussion, given that youth are so impacted by big tobacco and so impacted by the issue of tobacco use. And I think the Youth Voice really embodies hope and optimism. And I think youth are very creative and very innovative. And I think really that, that the youth voice is something that society as a whole can benefit from. And, and I encourage any, any youth out there um, and aspiring advocates to really use your voice to advocate on issues that, that you may be interested and concerned about. That's so great to hear, Milton. Thank you for sharing your story with us and congratulations again on this honor. I have no doubt we'll see you continue to do great things in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, I've, I've had a blast here and I'm, I'm so happy to be honored um, this year as part of the awards. I think we can all agree that our youth advocates, past and present, from Anna to Milton, represent quite a legacy of the 25 years of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. They have not only made the country and the world a healthier place with their incredible advocacy on tobacco control, but these amazing young people have gone on to use their knowledge and skills to make a difference on so many important issues. 25 years after our founding, we're still working to empower advocates, motivate policymakers, protect kids, improve health, and save lives. We know what works and how to accomplish it. And now the newest part of that legacy, applying the lessons of tobacco control advocacy to other public health issues, like road safety, nutrition policy, and cardiovascular health through our Global Health Advocacy Incubator. The incubator takes a proven systematic approach, customized collaboratively with in-country partners to deliver health policy wins in diverse cultures and political systems in low and middle income countries around the world. Young people once again play a critical role in advocating for these public health policies and programs around the world. Youth involvement is particularly important on issues like healthy food and tobacco control, where young people are often targeted directly by industries that undermine public health to maximize their profits. We cannot win these tough fights without youth engagement and ownership of these issues. We're not just celebrating our 25th anniversary. We're taking advantage of the opportunity to bring in new energy and perspective to our work and our mission and to articulate a bold agenda for the future. To tackle adversity with collaboration, intimidation with integrity, and deception with evidence. We're fighting for health, for kids, for equity, for change, for you. And together, we are taking on the toughest fights. What an inspiring evening. 
It's been a pleasure to join you all to celebrate our amazing honorees this year. It's been incredible to see that unyielding commitment to a healthier and more just and more equitable future. And I can't wait to see what each and every one of them does next in their fight for change. Congratulations again to all of our honorees. Keep on fighting. To all of you watching, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Tell us your favorite part using the hashtag Youth Advocate Awards or support the campaign for tobacco-free kids in the Berry Fund to help empower youth advocates of the future. Go to tobaccofreekids.org backslash donate. Thank you for supporting our fight for change and have a great night.